Hi, my name is Lisa Fagan Davis, and if you follow me on Twitter or on Facebook or saw me at Kalamazoo at the International Medieval Congress, uh, you will know that I recently acquired something very special, and it has just arrived in the mail, and I wanted to share with you the moment when I unbox my very own Spanish Forger cutting. I am incredibly excited about this. I'm also excited because it arrived in an excessively large box. It was very well packaged by the dealer, so we all may learn something today about packaging and shipping uh, art. So let's get this show on the road. So uh, I don't quite know whether it is uh, matted or framed. I, for I forgot to ask that. I only saw it in a photo uh, when I purchased it at Kalamazoo recently at the International Congress and Medieval Studies. I bought it from a dealer there named Boyd Mackis, who often has uh, Spanish forger fragments to sell. Now, those of you who don't know about the Spanish forger, I will tell you a little something. Uh, he was working actually around the turn of the 20th century, and he uh, created works of art and passed them off as if they were, in fact, actual medieval paintings, either panel paintings or cuttings from medieval manuscripts or entire leaves. And in the case of uh, a manuscript at the, currently at the Bainiki Library, he actually took an entire manuscript that wasn't illustrated, scraped away some of the text, and filled in the empty parchment with forgeries of medieval art and passed them off as authentic. And he got away with this for a really long time, decades probably, until he was finally named the Spanish forger and his style identified as forged by Belle de Costa Green, who was J.P. Morgan's private librarian. So with that background, first box opened, inside of which, another box. So let's get rid of all this and let's see what's in the next box. This has been extremely well packaged, by the way. Let's see what we've got here. Open the next box. Be careful doing this sort of thing. You don't want to damage the art that's inside, obviously. And inside we've got stuffing and uh, popcorn, styrofoam, and another box. No, I'm kidding. Here it is. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen my very own Spanish fortune leaf. Of course, you can't see it. So now I'm going to remove all of the bubble wrap and then you can see it for real. It looks as if it's been framed. And one of the first things I suspect I will do is go um, take it to an archival quality framer and have it framed so that you can see the back because the back is really important of the Spanish Forger pieces. And that's because one of the things the Spanish Forger did that was so wacko, and of course now it seems so obvious that uh, his work can't possibly have been authentic, because he would take a real page of a medieval manuscript, for the most part uh, 15th century choir books, where the stock that he used, and he would um, scrape away part of the text, or cut them up into smaller pieces, and then paint paintings on them. But he never covered the back. And while I've said that, here it comes. Ta-da! Ladies and gentlemen, my very own authentic, not forged, Spanish forger. There are people out there who try to forge the forger, but this is actually the real deal. Um, and you know this, there are lots of reasons actually. I'm trying to get up close without the reflection getting in the way. The main thing that gives him away is this very dramatic cleavage. The women are in, if I pull this up close, you can see what I'm talking about. The women are, uh, have a very deep decolletage on their gowns with really dramatic and obvious cleavage. And you would never find that in an authentic medieval manuscript. Now the book, the leaf itself is in a frame, but it is framed so that it can actually be easily opened. And I haven't done this before uh, with this page, but I'm actually gonna open up 
the frame so that we can actually flip it over. Ah, oh, and look at the back. Oh my God, this is awesome. I haven't even seen this yet. Look at the back. See this? This is a 15th century choir book. It has absolutely no business having a painting like this on the other side. It makes no sense at all. If you look at, let's flip it over again. It's tipped so I can do that. So if you look at the back, it's a liturgical manuscript. It's also the bottom of the page. See that really wide margin? So this is from the bottom of the, the other side of the choir book leaf. So if you look at this, such a miniature like this would never be along the bottom margin of a medieval manuscript. And a secular scene like this, it looks like it's a, meant to be a queen enthroned and there's a man with a book a woman with a rosary or a crucifix, so perhaps she's taking some kind of a vow in a church, uh, inside what looks like the letter G. So if anyone had ever bothered to look at the back, it would have been really obvious that this is a forgery. But nobody ever bothered to look at the back. But thanks to Belle de Costa Green, who figured it out, we can all know and identify the Spanish forger and his work is now considered um, collectible because of the, uh, the trick that he played on an entire, um, for decades, on collectors and art connoisseurs. So I'm very excited to introduce you to my very own Spanish forger cutting, which I will tomorrow be taking to an archival framer to have framed so that uh, it's glass on both sides so that I will be able to um, show the back as well as the front. Thanks for sharing this moment with me.